ब्रह्मणे नमस्कृत तत्वजुगेन स्वभाव अधिगण्यते the absolute truth which is beginningless and endless has no duplicate no parallel no rival yet that supreme brahman aratman the absolute godhead out of exuberant joy and bliss reveals from within and appears as universal one vigyan gana individual soul jivam and the entire universe jagatam as the object of enjoyment for the same one got it who is dwelling in the heart of all as the inner lord he is all pervading one indivisible entity called brahman atman ishwar technically known as spiritually known as sadguru sachidanandamayi mata and out of exuberance joy assumes innumerable forms together with the universal one because that possesses inscrutable power out of which evolves the entire creation and that is the cause of the creation preservation and dissolution that remains always the same in spite of assuming the universal form and innumerable individual forms as jivas here and there everywhere he is present as the deity eternal infinite existence without any second though apparently there are contradictions in the forms names ideas but all of them have got the same substance for their existence and their background the same self divine god it becomes the universal god manifesting as innumerable living beings and their objects of enjoyment that is why the same self divine is called the instrumental cause and the elemental cause nimitta karanam and upadan karanam together these 
to as a one the divine plays the sportful dramatic sense that game of self consciousness out of bliss love and desire his is the desire which is called supreme will and all other have the same desire which is called kamna vasana without which there cannot be any manifestation there cannot be any action there cannot be any enjoyment and cannot be any experience in life it is the same one divine being in all whatever may be the apparent nature of the individual life good or bad high or low great or small free and bound saint or ordinary householder no matter because the truth of life is divine without divine nothing can exist and nothing can function in the creation creation as a whole is the embodiment of divine manifestation in which divine is all power all knowledge all bliss all peace and what not and due to the presence of divine in the innermost core of heart the intellect the ego the mind the senses and the body survive and function with the motive deriving directly from the, the inner self divine though apparent nature is not conscious of it that is why in the present age most of the people are not conscious about the innermost self divine still they are not without divine they are not without self nobody can say that one is without self and what is self you will get clear answer in every day's utterance and speech all the words belong to you because it is evolving from the same one self and again dissolving in the same one self the one self in all and all in one self this is the realization that is wanted in life but people do not know how to realize this absolute truth and when this truth is realized nothing remains unknown and knowable at all so now there are so many processes means to realize the same one divinity which dwells in your heart as your true being for which one can exist and function according to one's own will and desire but one has to experience the, the result of the actions also now there are differences and distinctions in the apparent nature this is the beauty of the creation i cannot call it the demerits of the creation because the entire science has been revealed in this heart and all the paths meet there as one with the, the absolute one and it is common to all though all are not ever of it at present human life is a stay in the, the journey of divine from the absolute to the finite to the tiniest expression it is the glory of the divine self that remains always the same in spite of assuming so many characteristics through the, the inherent power swarup shakti yasya sunnidhana matrena deho indriya prana mana buddhi ahankara chitta prakriti chakyarthesu vartante pridayo without the presence of which neither the body not the senses not mind not the intellect not the ego not the vital force can exist and function they are alive and function 
according to their respective sphere and duty allotted to them by the greater nature, which is the Surup Shakti of Divine. Sabhav Shakti, Sabhav Atma, Sabhav Yogena, Odiganmate, Kriyate, Obi Prakasate. That is why that power is called Sabhav Shakti Prakriti. Prakriti, the meaning, Prakasam Karati Prakriti. All these words are absolutely original because this life had never gone through the spiritual scriptures, religious scriptures, nor had a chance to come in contact with a very noble, great soul who would kindly and graciously unfold the signs of divine realization. The divine within revealed on his own accord as to shower the supreme gaze for the, the people of the Kali Yuga so that they can attain their all perfect divine nature and enter the, the golden age, Shakti Yuga, direct from the Kali Yuga. This self is fully aware about the past, past incarnations of divinity and their mission, purpose and their function, their contribution. But all of them have been recorded in the scriptures. Still, people are not aware of their divine nature. Why? Something new is needed. Past is past, present is present. If the people of present follow the past, they will mistake because following the past, one cannot develop according to the need of the present. The scientific example the scientists wanted from this life, how they told that they could give positive proof, positive demonstration of their realized truth. Whether a divine realizer can give any positive truth? And yes, a perfect divine realizer can give a demonstration better than that of a scientist, because scientists deal with the effect of the cause, not the cause of the effect. The spiritual scientist deals with the cause of the effect, and the perfect realizer is beyond the cause of cause. So, effects is nothing to him. It's mere reflection only. Now, this is only reference for the two days speech. Perhaps in the paper it was published that two days matter is karma yoga. I will start from karma yoga. For action is the expression of power. Divine is the embodiment of power, knowledge, bliss, love and peace absolute. Each and every aspect needs full explanation for the, the right understanding of the deep, words and sentences. What is power? There are several opinions differing from one another about the concept of power. It is better to talk from the light of realization of this life, because this life has not borrowed anything from anywhere. What he is, he is. And what you are, you are. No difference in the, the essence, in the background, but apparent nature is contradictory. And you will glad to listen the cause of that contradictions and the solution of that contradiction. The existence is full of infinite glory. What is that glory? The divine potency, the divine energy, the divine force, which at one moment, that is as a whole, is called power. By virtue of his divine unfolds his infinite glories 
in innumerable forms, names and ideas which are the functions of divine energy, self potency. Sa Sarupa Yogena Atma Rama Pranarama Bhagavan Satma Mohima Obiprakasati Tatpitarthe Asadona Arthe Atat for his own joy and enjoyment, he unfolds his infinite internal glories in innumerable forms, names, and ideas. Nam rupe pratibhata iva. Pragyana brahmatma sabhava yogena vigyanama iva. Vigyanat gyanama iva. Gyanat agyanama iva. Arthat agyana rupe pratibhata iva. What is pragyan? What is vigyan? What is gyan? And what is agyan? Should be clearly defined. Otherwise, only by hearing the words or reading all these in the scripture, one cannot enter into the central essence of the words and realize the same essence identified with one's own self. Atma bodh means self consciousness, self conscious awareness, which is the infinite reality. But in apparent nature, that is divided in forms, in names, in actions, in results. Now, Sabhav Shakti unfolds the glories first as the, the cosmic intelligence, Mahat Tattam, out of which manifests Ahankar Tattam, irresistible will, including I and my in the universal aspect. From that, manifest the five, four subtle elements called ether, air, fire, water and earth. All these five being aggregated and compound manifest as gross five elements of the same name as ether, air, fire, water, and earth. By permutation and combination, all these five, four gross elements constitute the gross universe with the gross bodies of all living beings and the five subtle elements within constitute the inner nature of the universal being as well as those of individual beings. Bhoir Shatta, Bhoir Shakti, Antar Shatta, Antar Shakti, Kendra Shatta, Kendra Shakti, Turiya Shatta, Turiya Shakti. All these are Sanskrit words. As all this revealed in this art is presented before you without any change and without any modification. So, the science of cosmology the creation of the universe is very difficult to realize. The scientists are striving for their best to find out the cause and discover the, the truth behind it. But they are arrested in the physical plane because they are all discoveries are only in the natural phenomena and not beyond that, that. They are not fully conscious and concerned about the, the spiritual and not to speak of the, the divine and super divine. Human life is a stage in the course of manifestations of divine power. Divine power has two pole courses, one centrifugal and one centripetal, meaning one direct from oneness to manyness and the other from manyness to oneness. The two pole courses should be clearly understood in order to 
no didi truth behind the the mysterious universe creation of the mysterious universe first manifestation is cosmic intelligence which i mentioned before that is mahatattva the repository of innumerable life force and their energies pranas the inner nature consists of buddhi ahankar chitta mana intellect ego mind stuff and mind and vital force is prana and gross body constituted of five gross elements panchbhut yogena parspar yogena sthulo deham nirmitam sukha deham panch sukha bhut trigun that is satrajan tama sapt means principle of illumination balance light and harmony and goodness and rajas is the principle of energy stuff activity greed ego niyam etc and tamas is the principle of inertia inert passivity inactivity stupor sleep indolence laziness fear etc now the energy functions from the transcendental stage to the, the outermost stage the transcendental means that beyond all creation gross subtle individual and universal and central means the universal one and inner means the shuttle entity and outer is the gross entity including all gross bodies of all individuals outer is the gross inner is the shuttle central is the causal and transcendental is the supra causal that is cause of all causes which itself has no cause at all that is causeless cause from there emanates the central one the inner one and the outer one the central one both universal and individual inner one is both universal and individual and outer one is both universal and individual now each and every individual is connected to the universal outer the inwardly centrally but in the transcendental state there is no division at all though in the universal there is no division still for the, the easy understanding it has been said like this now the power which is called prakriti starts its journey from oneness to manyness in the first step it becomes the universal godhead universal life secondly the universal ego in the universal life thirdly the five four subtle elements these are the seven fold manifestations of the divine power or energy who is i will try to, to demonstrate before you by the light of realization not from intellectual conviction or imagination imagination pertains to intellect and realization pertains to the true self who is the light of all light everything is known by the light of knowledge or consciousness which is self self is pure consciousness intellect is the reflection of that consciousness mind is the reflection of intellect and senses are the reflection of mind and physical body is the reflection of senses the function of each one within the other takes a time as 40th part of a second in that small time the inner functions goes on now what is the energy energy in appearance is the matter but in a sense it is more than matter where matter is charged is activated is dynamic 
then it is called force. When it is static and rigid, it is called matter. Now, in the material field, there are innumerable gradations. In the energy field, there are innumerable gradations, out of which some are mentioned in the physical science, including chemistry, physics, geology, geology, astronomy, and the rest. But all these are mere reflection of Prakriti. That is why, knowing some of them, the scientists are not free from afraid, free from fear, free from desire, and free from anger and care. One can become free from all this when one realizes one's true nature, which is ultimate for all time, as it is, which I mentioned before. Now, in the energy field, we find the functions of physical body, functions of pranas, the vital force, the functions of senses, the indios, the functions of our mind, mana, vitti, and the functions of ego and intellect, ahankar and buddhi. Each of them has specific character, but they are connected with one another, without which they cannot function independently. Buddhi requires mind for its function. Mind requires senses for itself, and senses requires physical body. So, we start from the physical body. What is the physical body? Physical body is constituted of several limbs, mustak, head, neck, shoulder, arms, chest, belly, waist, thigh, knee, leg, fingers is the outer. Inwardly, it contains blood, bone, fat, marrow, nerves, and the rest. The outer body is called Annamoy Kosho. The human life is defined from the standpoint of koshos or sheets. So, the human being has five sheets. The outer sheet is Annamoy, made of food, matter. It grows from matter, sustained by matter or food, and dissolves in matter again. And in this outer sheet exists the vital sheet, Pranamaya Kosha, which is made of air. The total limbs are conducted by the, the inner air, which is called Pranavayu, vital air, vital force, vital energy, bioenergy. And within that is the mental sheet, the sheet of thinking faculty, feeling and understanding connected with the senses. Mind cannot function without senses. Again, within the mind is the intellect, which is called buddhi, intellectual sheet. And behind that is called a sheet, which is known as anandamaya kosha. All these five sheets act like covering, just as a sword has a cover. So it remains within the cover. So our soul remains within these five covers, five sheets. Now, the characteristics of physical body, the outer physical nature, is to support all the inner five sheets. It is the outer sheet, just like the, the outer gatehouse. And within that is the vital sheet, pranamaya kosha, characterizing hunger, thirst, movement, modification, growth and decay. And the mental sheet characteristics of mind is the pros and cons of things, that is, willing, desiring, 
and experiencing the desiring and acting experiencing the result good and bad pleasure and pain and the rest and the characteristics of intellect is judgment is discrimination and determination to determine the fact to determine the, the truth of a thing and anandamoy kosha characterizes the experienced happiness and bliss beyond deep sleep in the, the deep sleep occurs the, the dream in which anandamoy kosha shavas the experience of bliss but it is not the supreme bliss as it is but a reflection of that only now in our day to day life the outer physical body acts in the, the waking state and subtle body acts in the, the deep state and causal body acts in the, the deep sleep state the three bodies are one within the other the outer one is the physical and the, the innermost one is the, the causal and the three states waking dream and deep sleep are the three manifested expressions of consciousness so one individual life has three bodies three states five sheets three qualities but the self is the witness of all of them it is never attached to any of them though all of these appearing functioning and dissolving repeatedly on the same one cell which is existence knowledge and bliss absolute this cell is called god brahman atman it remains as it is that is why the truth of divinity and self is all perfect all one without a second and all ever present never goes out of existence nitya vartamanam sasang vedam swanu bhava deva sayan that means it is ever present self knowing existence and the all knowing god or lord of the inwards man should realize this in one life either in this life or in any life to get rid of all this miseries of life miseries are threefold they are adibhutam adidaivam adhyatma adibhutam that arises from living creatures adidaivam that arises from providential divine agents such as rain storm they are considered as providential divine agents daivam daiva shakti and adhyatma means that arises from body and mind now in life we find two personalities one is relative and the other is real people know the truth of the relative existence more than that of the real one apna satya swarup jo hai usko anubhuti pehle bhi ho nahi sakta apna jo swabhav shakti hai wo apparent nature ke देह इंद्रिय प्राण मान बुद्धि अहंकार चित्त ये सबको मिला करके जो लाइफ है उसको अनुभूति सबको भी हो सकता है बट नॉट ऑल परफेक्टली वाई अंटिल अनलेस वन इज कॉन्शियस ऑफ इज ट्रू नेचर विच इज ऑल डिपेंड फॉर ऑल टाइम वन कैन नॉट बी श्योर एंड सर्टेन अबाउट हिज इनर बींग एंड आउटर बींग एंड ऑल अराउंड हिम और हार नाउ today's matter is karma yoga what is karma that which is reveals through our physical body senses prana mana buddhi ahankar chitta is some dynamic expressions connected with inner reflection of consciousness man buddhi ke sath milakar hamari karma chal raha hai ek karma jo hai hamari wo karma ka karan kaha जब तक तो आत्मज्ञान रिवील नहीं करे तब तक तो किसी को पूरा ज्ञान हो नहीं सकता है आत्मज्ञान इज द ओनली नॉलेज हुइज कैन रिवील ऑल द सीक्रेट्स ऑफ लाइफ परफेक्टली एंड इनफाइनिटली एंड फॉर एक्शन फॉर वर्क वी रिक्वायर ए फिजिकल बॉडी एंड 
Why action reveals? Due to desire. Ichha, kamna, vasana is the cause of action. And for action, one requires some ego, ankar. Kam, karma, kartitta. These three are the main in our relative process of life. Without these three, one cannot exist, one cannot function. So all our actions have these three in the background. Some desire, some ego, and ego, in order to fulfill the desire, is impelled to act. How? Through the senses and through the physical body. Now each and every limb connected to the physical body has got its specific function, literally known as function of the senses or organs, five sensory organs or organs of perception and five organs of action. Organs of action known as the function of hasta, pad, jivva, upasta, payu. By hand, we perform actions taking and giving. By pada or feet, we move from one place to another. And by tongue, we can speak bak. And upasta is the generative organ through which generation of life is possible. Prajananam and payu means anas through his our inward waste is excreted. And Panchagan India, Chokhu, Karna, Nasika, Yubha, Tak, eyes, the ears, the nose, the organ of taste and speech, Yubha, and Tak, skin. Skin function as the touch, Shabda, Sparsha, Luplas, Gandha, five objects of knowledge. Shabda, we perceive through ears, Sparsha, through senses, Rupa, form through eyes, Rasa, through tongue, Gandha, through nostril, nose. All these are the functions which automatically conduct their scheduled duties without any dictation. These are called automatic functions of the physical nature. Within this physical nature is the inner nature consisting of mono buddhi hankar chitta, mind, intellect, ego, and mind stuff. The four in one and one in four. Antakaran is one inner organ, in and through which the indwelling Lord, the Supreme De Self Divine, reveals. This Antakaran functions in four aspects, mono buddhi hankar chitta, each having specific characteristics. Buddhi performs as judgment, performs as determination and total understanding. Mind as thinking, willing, acting through senses. Ego as the, the lord of the individual life or the agent of all actions. And mind stuff is a storehouse where the residue or results of all previous actions remain in a subtle form or seed form. Sanskaram, smriti, bhandar, from which arises desire to experience the same and something new repeatedly. That is why the inner nature functions in fourfold way. And behind that lies the unmanifest prakriti, where the three ingredients, the three Reals or modes of prakriti, sattva raja tamo, remain in equilibrium when there is no creation at all. When the three break the equilibrium, breaking the equilibrium start functioning by dominating each other. There is a triangular fight among them. So sattva wants to dominate over rajas and tamas, rajas wants to dominate over sattva and tamas, tamas wants to dominate or sattva and rajas. And according to that, our character is formed. It's maybe both division hotai combination. Satya ka division mixed ho jata hai rajas ke saath, tamas ka saath, 
और राजस्व का मिक्स हो जाता है सत्य के साथ तमस के साथ तमस का मिक्स होता है सत्य के साथ रस के साथ ये जितना भी कैरेक्टर ह्यूमन है और एनिमल का है सब ये तीन गुण का प्रभाव से भी चलता है तो आउट ऑफ दिस थ्री गुनर्स दैट विच इज प्रिडोमिनेंट बिकम्स द डोमिनेटिंग नेचर ऑफ लाइफ somebody is purely sattvic somebody is rajasic somebody is tamasic what is the characteristics of sattvic man full of faith regard and full of devotion striving to get rid of all the demerits shraddha bhakti vishwas yogena atmagyan lavarthe tapakriyam sadhanam karoti that means one strives to to come out of the, the cycle of the transmigratory existence full of miseries sufferings caused out of ignorance without ignorance there cannot be any action and without action there cannot be any development and without development how can one perceive the greater and higher truth within and without so all are interdependent that is why the many in one and one in many stand for the divine science and many in many and for many stand for the material science now each and every individual life a man has two full characters one for the, the many and one for the one ek to hai sarv ke liye sansar ke liye ek hai samosar ke liye that is for oneness which is of the nature of homogeneous character and sansar mein jo hai usko hai character heterogeneous each and every individual manifestation here has got some divine meaning and some material meaning material meaning means non self divine meaning means full of self most conventional thing in life is the, the liking of contradictions so long one likes the contradictions one is bound to act under the influence of prakriti prakriti kriyate sarvahani not the self not the god god is only witness self is witness it is absolutely untouched by any function of prakriti only it exists that is enough for prakriti to unfold its phenomenal drama of meaningness prakriti is constantly unfolding vishwa srishti universal creation is the function of prakriti prakriti kriyate karmani sarvasya it is said in the gita that is god when comes in incarnation unfolds the original truth which lies within the apparent nature what we experience in the outer nature is the manifold reflections of one and what you realize perceives within you is the, the light of duality subject object and behind that lies the self knowledge which is eternally one with the second and this life has attained the light of oneness oneness of knowledge knowledge of oneness far beyond that of the central one it is of the nature of transcendental and trans trans transcendental and beyond beyond also you can easily experience that in your life when you follow the knowledge of oneness and oneness of knowledge because you are one with that absolute divinity which cannot leave you which cannot exist without you you are always with that only that your mind or intellect is not conscious of that you have to do train up your mind with the light of oneness and then you will become absolutely identified with the same 
to become identified with the, the absolute reality, the absolute Godhead or self-divine, what is needed? Only the knowledge of oneness and oneness of knowledge. What is that? And how can it be attained? By two process. And I will define all these things step by step within this period allotted here for your perfect enlightenment and realization of the truth which lies at the bottom of your life behind all phenomena of names and forms. You are the, the same self divine which is realized by some individual in age. Kavi kavi isi mahatma log bhi aate jinko paas hamko milta hai divine knowledge ki shatt ke umr tatt ki and mukti tatt ki pure vigyan. The knowledge of oneness is the, the essence of all of them. This is really some new message for the, the humanity as a whole to get rid of the, the contradictions of the outer experience of life and be well established in the oneness of knowledge in which one will experience the eternal happiness, bliss, love and peace without any interruption of prakriti. In the transcendental nature, prakriti has nothing to do. There, prakriti surrenders itself or herself. Why? Because in the oneness of knowledge and knowledge of oneness, no duality can exist and function. So your true nature is that without knowing the truth of that, you cannot live peacefully, happily in this mundane existence where everything is coming and going just like passing shows. But people cannot understand the secret or mystery behind it. So they are compelled to undergo the influence of Prakriti. But Prakriti is no other than the, the inherent power of your true self, which is all divine. So when you are conscious of your divine nature, Prakriti vanishes. And when you forget that, Prakriti functions in your life in contradictions. Now, the active part of your life is conducted by the, the vital force, Pran Shakti, and that vital force is universal. Prana can never be dissolved. Even in the dead body, you will find the function of prana in one form. Otherwise, no new life can form with the deformation of the body. Because there is some kind of prana existing even after the fall of the body. And that prana par excellence is called life. And life par excellence is called Lord. I will define that step by step. Otherwise, it will become very difficult for one to perceive all the stages in one day's peace. So I don't like you to disturb your mind. I only shower some light in order to make you enlightened so that you can gradually grasp the whole thing and find the final one within you as your true being. There is no God other than your own self. There is no truth other than your self. And there is no reality other than your true being. You can forget everything of the creation, everything of the universe, everything of nature, but you cannot forget your own existence. How is it possible? To forget your existence, you require your existence. So yourself is the only proof with the help of that, you can prove the existence of others. So, all my words will help you to find the greater light within you to solve your own self-created problems, self-generated problems. How the problems are made, it is due to the ignorance of your true self, which is infinitely one, ever free from all merits and demerits, virtue and vice, actions and results one and many, and it is immortal. Self has no birth and death, no increase and decrease, no growth and no change and alteration, no limitation. It is beyond all. So why should you not be conscious about that reality which is absolutely your own? You have to become conscious by the words of a perfect realizer until unless one is instructed by a man of self-knowledge, knowledge of the Absolute, one cannot attain 
spiritual illumination. If you follow the words of a perfect realizer, you require no particular sadhana as mentioned in the scriptures and in vogue in the society, preached by so many practicants and followers of divine science. But a realizer is very rare because realizer is one in whom all contradictions disappear, all functions of prakriti come to an end and all desire has been melted. The ego is negated and all actions have got total culmination. Next day, I would request the authority to place one blackboard here so that with the help of some diagram and figure, the most difficult subject can be demonstrated clearly and very easily for understanding. Only by words in one day or two days, as because you are not well accustomed to this process, if you follow this day by day for some days, you will find yourself to be perfectly enlightened without undergoing any sadhana according to our celebrated yogas. Now, karma yoga is the, the topic of today. Yoga means union, contact and a continuous link and a relation uncontaminated, unbreakable. Karma emanates from the source, exists in the source and finally dissolves in the source. So, yoga is a discipline or a formula or a process or means which is already present in the beginning, in the middle and at the end. That is why yoga is a divine means or process ever present in all living being due to the presence of divinity or self. It is continuous. So when you know the science of oneness, you will find that the continuity of the, the persistence of the existence is unfaltering. It is. It means I and T. I means the very presence of consciousness. T means Tao. It is another presentation of consciousness. And is means I S. I is infinite. S is self. So, I and thou are but one which is infinite consciousness, infinite self. So, you are to become aware of it in life for which you are born. You are not born only to suffer for what you have done or for what you have thought about, but each and every birth is nothing but a chance to become conscious of your true nature, which is all perfect all divine, immortal, and ever free, and infinite, one without a second. When you become conscious of it, all your traditional characters, all your sufferings, all your ignorance will disappear. All contradictions born of ignorance. So, when the, the knowledge absolute reveals, ignorance has nothing to do. It disappears altogether. So, to Get rid of the ignorance, you require the perfect knowledge. And that perfect knowledge is really your true self or divine. And that can be had from a perfect realizer only. A man who is not a realizer cannot impart you such knowledge. Only the perfect realizer can impart you the knowledge of oneness and oneness of knowledge. With the help of that, you will attain your true divine nature, which is infinitely one with your second. Satyam Shivam Sundaram. The truth, goodness and beauty is the characteristic of your true self. These are not the qualities, but the true nature of yourself or being, which is called all divine. Satyasya Satyam Nityasya Nityam Purnasya Purnam Ananda Surupam Tattva Mushi. Now what that? I will define that gradually, not today. Today only the cause of life, cause of function and cause of suffering, cause of liberation 
is the topic of today. That is the action. Action is the outer nature and conductor of the action is the inner nature and the controller of the inner nature is the central nature that is universal one and the essence of all of them is the transcendental nature which is all given for all time as it is. Pragyan Ghanam. Pragyan means Brahma, Atman. Vigyan means Ishram. Gyan means Jivam and Agyan means Jagatam. The Jagat is for the enjoyment of the, the Jivas and Jiva is the medium for Ishwara to manifest himself in order to experience his divine glory. And Ishwara is the direct manifested being of the, the absolute divine self. Param Brahman, Paramatman is beyond any manifestation. It is beyond the sense of duality. It is the absolute reality standing alone, eternally, infinitely. It is truth of all truths, knowledge of all knowledge, bliss of all bliss, and peace of all peace. It is the highest truth of love. The dearest of all, the most beloved of all, is verily your true self, without which you cannot measure anything, cannot experience anything, cannot know anything, cannot talk of anything, cannot understand anything. Knowledge does not mean anything objective. Knowledge is ever beyond objective. Objective is ignorance. Knowledge is the light that reveals itself and all. But nothing can reveal knowledge. It is the light of all light. The all-knowingness, the awareness, the witness of all. So it is ever present. Infinitely one with the second. Ekumeva Dayam Abdaitam. Very famous paragraph about this is Sansar Sagar Ananta Taranga Lahori Budbud Nitta Prakashman. Jivas are the waves, ripples. They are countless in number. Many in number, but all are made of the same one substance. As the ripples, bubbles, foams, and waves of the ocean are nothing but the same one water in essence. So all jivas are nothing but the same one consciousness, which is called self. Ekohi atma sarvabhutesh gurha sarvabhutarantaratma karma bhaksha sarvabhutadi basha. Kevala Sakshi Teta Nidgunascha Bacha Sakshi Prano Vrittesh Sakshi Buddhesh Sakshi Buddhi Vrittesh Sakshi Manus Sakshi Mano Vrittesh Sakshi Sakshi Deva Nittam Purnam Anantam Shaktam Yenam Anandam Amritam All these are your true nature. Be out of it. You have got a chance to listen to this which is very rare. There are so many people living at Delhi, but some very few blessed ones have got a chance to listen to this. Why? This is absolutely grace of the Lord. Without His grace, nothing is possible. His grace is the supreme will of divine. So the supreme will divine reveals here for the, the cause of enlightening all of you as the inseparable part of the all divine, as the immortal oneself. So by the light of these words, you discover your true nature as all divine for all time as it is. It is your own. You are not to borrow it or purchase it or have it from others. It is already with you, only that you are not conscious of it. Now you, with the essence of the words, become conscious, become aware of this, and be blessed at this point. Let Prakriti perform all the actions through your body, senses, mind, intellect, ego. You remain as witness of all of them. You are barely that witness self. You are not the doer. 
you are not the enjoyer or experience it is the ego not your true self you have mistakenly identified yourself with this is false identity with the body senses mind intellect actually you are ever free one though living in the body you are not attached with the body i will define it gradually the seer is distinct from the seen from the object you experience all objects but you remain always distinct from the objects how is this possible i will demonstrate that through with the help of blackboard though i would not write i will select some of you to write i only di will dictate and that will be very helpful for you to follow me because it is a very wonderful science unfolding your true divine nature which remain concealed covered and hidden within you for ages together and you are striving to to discover it but cannot because your outer nature disturb you arrest your mind into the external objects in names and forms so much so that it never allows the mind to go within and find out the truth there at night everybody go to sleep that is natural but you have to rise above the sleeping state also samadhi is the true nature of self susupti is the true nature of prakriti so you are beyond prakriti you are not under prakriti but at present due to the forgetfulness of your true nature you have become deluded by the functions of prakriti and consider that these are the reality truth no prakriti may be true only by the light of self divine otherwise prakriti has no separate entity apart from the divine self you are barely that different self you are not prakriti outwardly though you appear to be prakriti but inwardly you are the self you are not prakriti prakriti exists prakriti is maya because it plays the, the game of duality and diversity but your self remains a dual infinitely as one without a second it cannot be dual it cannot change itself it cannot be contaminated by any change of the prakriti so action is spontaneous functions of prakriti which has nothing to do with the self or self has nothing to do with this actions of prakriti so today's speech contains the essence as the spontaneous activity of life within and without the functions of prakriti acting as the functions of life and nature together but prakriti is for the self mistakenly substituted for divine or brahman it is upadi as attributing adjunct if you attach some adjunct with you you become connected or attached to it then you become affected but when you know that you are beyond any adjunct any upadhi any limitation so no function of prakriti can contaminate you can influence you any more so with the light of oneness you can conquer all the dimensions of life without any difficulty because the knowledge of oneness cannot be interpreted by the function of prakriti prakriti is always under the, the light of oneness prakriti poti is god you are barely that god there is no two god or many gods all these are imagination as we find the reflection of one sun in different pots of water but the sun is one reflections are many so self is one but appearance are many you will become convinced by the light of oneness that you are one eternally without in second so all that we find outwardly as different from one another as distinct from one another as contradiction all are nothing but reflections only reflections cannot be real only the reflector is real you are really that reflector you are really that super subject without which object has nothing no existence and no function at all so action is the 
characteristics of outer nature and knowledge is the characteristics of inner nature. So today I only point out your inner nature in your outer nature so that you can understand the cause and purpose of the, the action of Prakriti by the light of your inner nature. And next day I will unfold the central nature by which you will cross over the, the demerits of the inner nature of knowledge, which is mere deflection. Knowledge has got twofold. One is relative, and other is real. Relative knowledge is reflection, and the real knowledge is the light itself, the self or God. So action will continue its course without affecting your self. When you will become conscious of your true being as the knowledge of oneness. You are eternally one without the second, infinite consciousness, bliss, love and peace. There is no peace, no bliss, no love apart from yourself. It is the self which is called, or which is defined like this. So, Karma Yoga is the universal aspect of divinity in apparent nature and Dhyana Yoga of inner nature, which I will try to define next day, and Gyana Yoga of the central and whole nature, Bhakti Yoga is the total of all. Bhakti, as we commonly know, is not real one. I will define that from the ghost state to the subtlemost one, so that you will be able to, to perceive the, the truth behind it, the light that will reveal within you to accept the whole thing as one. Because one has no parallel. One is eternal. This one is not a created one, but protiyeka, that means each individual expression is creation of prakriti. But the eternal oneness is not a creation of prakriti. It is divine one. Eka brahma, eka sat, Eko Atma, Eko Deva, Sarvabhutesh Gura, that eternal one, indivisible entity called Divine Self is present within and without of all manifestations. You are barely that one Divine Self. Don't forget that. You are no other entity apart from the Divine Self. Be sure of that. Ascertain that you are born only to become conscious of that, to become aware of that, to become a perfect realizer of that. So, with the help of this light, you just remember your true nature, which is uncreated, self-begotten, self-effulgent, self-evident, self-perfect, and self-abiding. You are always with you, and that you is no different from the infinite divine self. This I unfold without being prejudiced and biased by our conventional religious science that creates more differences more and more in the ages than to unify all the, the paths, all the theories, all the doctrines, all the theses as one. They know to divide and rule over others. No. No man has the right to rule over others instead of himself or herself. First one should rule over oneself to be perfectly conscious about his own perfection. Until unless one attains his perfection, his freedom, absolute freedom and liberation, one cannot rule over others. A non-realizer creates more problems than solution. So, it is said that it is better to take refuse at the feet of a perfect realizer than to fly away from the, the so-called posers and so-called deceivers of the society. A blind man cannot lead another blind. So one who has not reached the highest goal, the acme of knowledge, the supreme perfection and knowledge which is called all divine for all time. 
one cannot read one and remove one's ignorance, one's doubt and one's suffering. All suffering are result of one's ignorance of true nature. So, so long there is ignorance, the suffering will continue. But the very moment you realize your true self, all your sufferings will disappear with total ignorance and it will never come back and disturb you again. So, in order to become free completely from the, the sense of duality and relativity, you require the, the knowledge of unity and identity with one and all. When you know that you alone exist as the universal existence, you are absolutely perfect. A perfect realizer never finds any duality, any distinction between himself and others because to him there is no second entity, no duality. So what can he do? He has nothing to do, nothing to think and nothing to perform. But all knowledge reveals from within continuously because knowledge does not require any support, any medium. It is spontaneous. It is self-abiding. When self is ever present, knowledge is ever present. But you can say, how can you be conscious of it? By the words of a real agent who has no motive, no interest and no purpose. That is why the very august proclamation came out from this that I have no mission at all. I am without a mission because I am all perfect one without a second. So when there is no second, there is no contradiction, there cannot be any mission.